Okay, so the lecture today is on paired data. As always, <laughs> let us consider the following data. I'll do it on a new page. <clears throat> so these are the price, they're prices of textbooks. at UCLA's bookstore. And they're compared to the prices of the same books on Amazon. So you'll know there is, <laughs> so wait, maybe I'll mention this first. So this is a simple random sample from spring 2010. <clears throat> so you'll notice that there is a natural correspondence between the, these two values, the price at UCLA and the price of Amazon, right? For this book, this book has a price that it was sold at, at the UCLA bookstore. And it has a second price that is where, what is sold on Amazon. And what I'm trying to motivate is that every single observation, every single value, so here we have 27.67, has a natural correspondence to a value from Amazon, right? So let me, let me write that out fully. So each textbook has a price from Amazon and a price from UCLA. Thus, if I were to take any UCLA price, it would naturally correspond to a price in the, anima, in the Amazon column. So the idea here is that we really have kind of two sets of data. We have a bunch of observations that are UCL prices, UCLA prices. And we have a bunch of observations that are Amazon prices. But if I took a UCLA price, there would be a correspondence with a single other Amazon price, right? The price of that same book, except on Amazon. And we call this idea paired data. So let me define that precisely. It's two sets of observations. are paired if each observation in one set has a special correspondence connection
with exactly one observation in the other set. So this is the definition of paired data, and we have this data with the UCLA, UCLA and the Amazon price. So a natural question that we could ask is, are the prices at UCLA and Amazon different? I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> so whenever we have paired data, we often look at their difference. So let's take a look at this data again. These data. And you'll notice they actually do that for us here. This difference column is specifically UCLA minus Amazon. Right? So this minus this equals that. So it's UCLA price minus Amazon price. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look. We've, we've basically taken these two sets of data, and we've combined them in such a way that we've made a third set, specifically the difference in prices between UCLA Bookstore and Amazon. And we have now a set of 73 of these. And we can use them to perform inference. So let's take a look at these differences. So if I were to just take all of those differences that we see in this column and plot it in a histogram, it would look like this. And let's write that we had a sample size of 73, right? Our sample mean, I'm just going to tell you, was 12.76. And our sample standard deviation is 14.26. So what was our question? We wanted to know if there, if there was <laughs> if the average difference in prices from UCLA to Amazon was significantly significant, was statistically significant, if that price is, if the price in UCLA is bigger than the price in Amazon, or if the price in UCLA is smaller than it was in Amazon. And the way that we would do that. is we would perform a hypothesis test like we've been doing on the differences. OK, so our first step of doing a hypothesis test, our first step of inference, <clears throat> is to define our hypotheses. So H naught in this case would be there is no difference. in the average textbook price and the alternative is that there is a difference
And we can write that using notation a little bit more mathematically by saying this. Where mu here is the population of differences. So if I were to, instead of just getting this sample of differences right here, if I were to get the whole population of differences by looking at every single book in the UCLA bookstore and comparing it to the same, the same book's price on Amazon, if I were to get that whole population and calculate the average, I would call that average mu. The mu is the population average. But we only have a sample of 73 here, so we're going to see what we can say with it. So another thing in the first step is you define what you want your confidence level to be, which I'm going to say is 0.05. Okay. Okay. Step two is the easiest step is you just assume that the true average of differences between the prices in UCLA and Amazon is zero. So you assume that mu is zero. Step three, let's perform inference, calculate the p-value. First thing we do is we check our conditions. Well, let's see, let's go back up to our data. So we do have a large sample size, that's good. We said that these were, this was a simple random sample and I would say UCLA's bookstore likely has a lot of books. I would say 73 is less than or equal to 10% of the total population. That's good. We need to check skewness and it looks like we do have a right skew. And that's not great, but 73 is a pretty big, is a pretty big sample size. So I would say that we can overcome this skewness by the by as a consequence of the fact that we have a pretty large sample and proceed nonetheless. So those were our those were our conditions. I would say that check. We can move forward with inference. And the next thing that we need is we need to know what of sigma x bar is. And this because we're looking at the standard deviation of the mean, that's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, or the standard error. And this is gonna be this, just like before. And since our sample size is large enough, we can approximate it with the sample standard deviation divided by root n, which in this case is 14.26 over root 73, which is around this. Okay, thus, X bar is distributed, normal, centered at what we assume to be the true population mu, centered at our null value, with a standard deviation of 1.67. Nice. So what does this look like? Let's draw a picture. So this is the sampling distribution. centered at the true population mu, which by our null hypothesis, by our step two is equal to zero. And we observe the value 12.76. I think that's what I said it was. Yeah, our average difference was 12.76. Oops, seems pretty large. So that's like right here. And to get the p-value, we need to know this probability, and we also need to know the same probability on the lower end. So it's gonna be this prob, prob times two is equal to the p-value. Okay. So how do we do that? We need to find this, this probability in green up here. This is gonna be, we calculate our z-score, like we've always done.
minus the mu, which is zero in this case, divided by the standard error, which is gonna be 7.59, so it's very big. And to get that probability value, we take one minus our norm.s.dist function at 7.59 comma one, which is approximately very, very small. <laughs> and to get our p-value, it's just equal to two times this. Cool. The final step is to verify whether or not we are correct. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05, which indeed is greater than our p-value. And therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. All right? Our null hypothesis is that there is no different, there is no, that the, <laughs> that there is a difference between, on average, between the prices at the UCLA bookstore and the prices at Amazon. Note we didn't say one was a lot bigger than the other, we just said that there is a difference. Of course, you could use a one-sided hypothesis test to argue that one is bigger than the other. And hint, I think it's gonna be the UCLA bookstore. <clears throat> so, any questions on this? This is actually the same process that we've been doing. We're just now doing it on the differences of the data because we, well, it's the question that we're asking. Okay? So, one more thing, and then I'm gonna end for today. No, we're actually, goodness. My, my, my section four class always takes a lot longer than my section five class. We have plenty of time. Okay, next thing. Is difference of two means. What if we were interested in the difference of two population averages? Of data that are not paired. So to motivate this, consider the following. Data. This one. So these are a bunch of, I want you to specifically look at these, this column and this column. What we have are weights of infants and whether or not their mothers smoke. And we're interested in whether or not there is convincing evidence that newborns from mothers who smoke have a different average weight
the newborns from mothers who don't smoke. So as we all are hopefully aware by now, smoking is pretty detrimental to your health. But the question is, is it detrimental to the weight of your child's health? Or I guess the weight of your child. I don't, I don't know if it necessarily breaches the healthy weight. <clears throat> but something really important to notice about these data is that these data are independent. not paired. We took an independent random sample, and each observation is independent of any of the other ones. It's just some are classified as being from mothers who smoke, and some are classified as being from mothers who do not smoke. If I had an infant's weight from the not smoke category, it wouldn't naturally correspond to a certain other infant's weight in the smoke category, right? These are clearly not paired data. But we're asking a very similar question. We want to know if the average of one group is statistically significant from the average of another group. Or specifically, I think we want to know if the population averages are different, which of course, we don't know the population, so we perform inference. So let's take a look at how we would answer this question. Let's start by defining some notation. Let mu of smoke be the Average weight of newborns from mothers who smoke. And let mu of non smoke be the same thing. Average weight of newborns from non-smoking mothers. So these are the population averages, right? I've taken a sample from each of these two populations. I've taken a sample of mothers of infant weights from mothers who smoke and a sample of infant weights from mothers who don't smoke. And I wish to say something about the relationship between these two population means. If I had every single infant weight from a mother who smokes and every single infant weight from a mother who doesn't smoke, only then would I be able to calculate these values. But truly, we can't do that, so we perform inference. So our first step, as always, is just trying to define our hypotheses. So H0 is going to be that these two population means are the same. And the alternative is that they're going to be different. OK. And again, we'll choose a confidence level of 0 0.05. Now, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an algebra trick. It's not a difficult algebra trick, but nonetheless, it's going to make our computations a lot easier. So whenever we have a problem like this, we rewrite our hypotheses like so. Right, these are equivalent. I just minus one over to the other side. These are the exact same hypotheses. But they're written in such a way that it's really gonna help us because now we kind of have this natural thing right here. We're trying to perform inference on the difference of population averages. And the reason that is so good is because there is sort of a natural point estimate for this value, this starred value right here. So let me ask you, what is a natural point estimate for star? The answer is, well, 
I don't know what the average of these population means are. I don't know what the average of the population, excuse me, I don't know what the difference of the averages are for these two populations. Sorry, I said that wrong the first time. But I do have two samples. And if I were to take these two samples, I would say that my best guess would just be the difference of my two sample means. So if somebody asked, what is it? I would say, well, I don't know, but here is genuinely the best guess I could give you. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as our point estimate to do our hypothesis test. But remember, yeah, I'll do this. That in our other, in our old hypothesis test, we used x bar, right, as our point estimate. And we needed to be normally distributed, x bar to be normally distributed. We still need that here. We got x bar to be normally distributed by the central limit theorem. But now we don't need x bar to be normally distributed, but we need the difference of two different x bars to be normally distributed. And this is kind of tricky. <laughs> should it actually, I mean, it seems like maybe it should be, right? But that's, that's something that you have to mathematically prove. I don't, I don't know for sure, <laughs> except I do, which is the next thing I'm gonna give you, which is a fact about this. And that is if, X bar smoke and X bar non smoke are both normally distributed. So if you have that each of these are individually normally distributed, then you also have that X bar smoke minus X bar non smoke is as well. So in these problems, check all the conditions on both X, both of the sample means that you have, right? You have two samples and you check your conditions of both of them, then proceed. Okay, because if you have them both, then their differences will also be normally distributed. And that's a cool fact about normal distributions actually, which definitely is not covered in this class. So X bar smoke minus X bar non-smoke It's going to be normally distributed and centered at the true population difference. Right? Remember when we did the central limit theorem, it was centered at the true mu. Well, now it's going to be centered at the true mu difference. Okay? And the standard deviation of this sampling distribution, the standard deviation of the difference of the means is equal to, and this is a formula. This is a formula and a half. So let's, let me write it out and then we can talk about it. This is the variance of the values from the smoking population over the number of people in the sample 
plus the variance of people in the non-smoking um, population divided by the number from that sample that we took. Add it up all under the square root. So <laughs> this isn't a pretty formula, but it's certainly all things that we've seen before. So let me define each of these variables real quick. Um, this is the variance. in weights of infants whose mothers smoke. This is the same thing except whose mothers don't smoke. This is the number of observations in the smoke group and this was the number of observations in the non-smoke group. Okay. So recall we had what this was the this is going to be the sampling distribution. It's going to look something like this. It's going to be centered at mu smoke minus mu non-smoke. And the standard error, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Is going to be plus or minus this standard deviation of of the difference of the means. Okay. So this is a little, this is a little bit more new. But it is a very relevant question. If you had two populations and we wanted to know if the difference in the averages between these two populations is significant, is different to the point that we wouldn't believe that they're the same, you would perform a test like this. And I'm going to, in the lecture video, take you through the remainder of the steps for inference. So this is just me talking about why the difference in the means is actually normally distributed, but actually performing all of the different steps is going to be something I go over in the lecture video. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should mention. Oh, note that these are each of the variances, but if you calculated the standard deviation and squared it, that would get you the variance. So we've mostly been using standard deviation for these stuff, this stuff, and this formula just requires the variance, which shouldn't be too much of a difficulty. You just square the standard deviation, right? Okay. So I think that is all I'm going to go through. The video lecture video will take you through the remainder. Are there any questions? All right.